Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where we explore fascinating concepts in mathematics and beyond. Today, we're tackling an intriguing problem, finding the square root of j in a virtual number system. But before we dive in, let's do a quick refresher on what makes this virtual number system unique. In this system, the virtual unit is j, and it follows some interesting properties. First, j is defined as the natural logarithm of negative 1, uh, which means e raised to the power of j equals negative 1. Second, the exponential formula for e raised to the power of j times x is given by cosine of pi times x plus e raised to the power of j over 2 times sine of pi times x. From this formula, we derived that j squared equals negative pi squared. And finally, the square root of negative 1 in this system is e raised to the power of j over 2. Now that we have these fundamental properties in place, let's find the square root of j using two different methods. First, we'll use the direct method, and then we'll verify our answer using the logarithmic method. To find the square root of j, we assume that the square root of j equals x, where x is a virtual number of the form a plus b times j. Here, a and b are real numbers that we need to determine. Our goal is to solve for a and b such that x squared equals j. Expanding a plus b times j squared, we get a squared plus 2 times a times b times j plus b times j squared. Since we know that j squared equals negative pi squared, we substitute this into the equation. That gives us a squared plus 2 times a times b times j minus b squared times pi squared. Now let's separate this equation into real and virtual parts. The real part is a squared minus b squared times pi squared, while the virtual part is 2 times a times b. Since x squared must equal j, we equate these terms to the real and virtual parts of j. The real part of j is 0 and the virtual part is 1. This gives us two equations. First, a squared minus b squared times pi squared equals zero. Second, two times a times b equals one. Now let's solve these equations step by step. From the first equation, a squared equals b squared times pi squared. Taking the square root on both sides, we get a equals b times pi. We choose the positive root for simplicity. Next, we substitute a equals b times pi into the second equation. That gives us two times b times pi times b equals one. Simplifying, we get 2 times b squared times pi equals 1. Solving for b squared, we get b squared equals 1 divided by 2 times pi. Taking the square root, we get b equals positive or negative 1 divided by the square root of 2 times pi. Now substituting b back into a equals b times pi, we get a equals plus or minus the square root of pi divided by 2. So using the direct method, we found that the square root of j is plus or minus the square root of pi, divided by 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2 times pi times j. Now let's verify this result using the logarithmic method. To compute the square root of j, we use the relationship between roots and logarithms. That is, the square root of j equals e raised to the power of 1 half times the logarithm of j. So our task now is to find the logarithm of j in this virtual number system. In this system, the logarithm of a number a plus b times j is given by 1 half times the natural logarithm of a squared plus, plus b squared times pi squared plus j divided by pi times the arctangent of b over a. For j, we have a equals 0 and b equals 1. Substituting these values into the formula, we get the natural logarithm of 0 squared plus 1 times pi squared plus j divided by pi times the arctangent of 1 over 0. Simplifying, the modulus term gives us the natural logarithm of pi squared which simplifies to 2 times the natural logarithm of pi. The phase term involves arctangent of 1 over 0. Since 1 divided by 0 corresponds to an angle of pi over 2, we get j divided by pi times pi over 2, which simplifies to j over 2. So the logarithm of j simplifies to the natural logarithm of pi plus j over 2. Now substituting this back into our formula for the square root of j, we get e raised to the power of 1 half times the natural logarithm of pi plus j over 2. Distributing the 1 half, we split this into two terms. The real part is e raised to the power of 1 half times the natural logarithm of pi, which simplifies to the square root of pi. The virtual part is e raised to the power of j over 4. Now we use the exponential formula. e raised to the power of j times x equals cosine of pi times x, plus e raised to the power of j over 2 times sine of pi times x. Substituting x equals 1 fourth, we get cosine of pi over 4 plus e raised to the power of j over 2 times sine of pi over 4. 
Evaluating these values, cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 divided by 2, and sine of pi over 4 is, is also the square root of 2 divided by 2. So e raised to the power of j over 4 simplifies to the square root of 2 divided by 2, plus e raised to the power of j over 2 times the square root of 2 divided by 2. Substituting this back into our expression for the square root of j, we get the square root of pi times the square root of 2 divided by 2 plus e raised to the power of j over 2 times the square root of 2 divided by 2. Factoring out the square root of 2 divided by 2, we get the square root of 2 times pi divided by 2 times 1 plus e raised to the power of j over 2. Since e raised to the power of j over 2 equals j divided by pi, we substitute this in, giving us the same result as before. So using the logarithmic method, we again find that the square root of j is plus or minus the square root of pi divided by 2 plus 1 over the square root of 2 times pi times j. This perfectly matches the result from our direct method. Both methods confirm the same answer, showing the consistency and elegance of this virtual number system. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Got questions or suggestions for future videos? Drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.